Turkesterone, or should I say Turkestagon? It's okay? Yeah, let's, let's go with that. So a lot of people have been making videos on this situation. It's kind of been blowing up. So I'm a little bit late to the party. However, it is intentionally late. I heard about this basically the day that it started. A wizard is never late. And the reason that I am late is that it is a complex situation and it's hard to say exactly what is going on or who to trust or where the truth actually is. So basically the situation is that this guy from the company Nootropics Depot decided to test the Gorilla Mind Turkestrone as well as the Harder Than Last Time Turkestrone to see if they uh, measured up. And according to his post, they absolutely did not measure up. They had just a tiny fraction of the turkesterone that they were supposed to have. Now, as expected, this finding caused quite a stir. If you're buying something and someone is saying, hey, it contains almost nothing of the substance that you're actually trying to consume, that's a big deal. One channel that I thought covered this really, really well was Welcome back to Seekistan. Strength. Now, I don't have a background in chemistry, but this guy does. And he's actually done this exact kind of work, testing various substances to see, in terms of quality control, if it is what people say it is. Now, it seems like there are two main tests that are being discussed. The first is UV Viz, where they pass light through a substance. And the other one is high performance liquid chromatography, where you basically pass a substance through a tube and then it separates it out. And then you can get the results that way. Derek from More Place More Dates actually went into this thread and was defending his product using the UV Viz test, which is apparently not the best test to separate turkesterone and beta ectosterone because they are quite similarly molecularly. They actually show up as the same thing. They can only be separated from the high performance liquid chromatography. There's also the issue that apparently they were using a lab called ABC Labs, which had received a letter from the Food and Drug Administration for practices that were not quite up to standard. Trouble is, there is bias everywhere. There is bias from people selling the stuff. There's bias from this Nootropics Depot guy because he's the Nootropics Depot guy. He doesn't sell a turkesterone, but he's starting a beta ectosterone product somewhere in the near future where he just released it, something like that. And seems like a hell of a coincidence, right? Ooh, how convenient. So there's clearly some bias there. I'm biased because I don't like Greg, but I do like Derek, which is part of the reason why I've held off on making this video. And so it can be difficult to find out what the hell is actually going on because this Nootropics Depot guy, the tests seem legit. It seems like he's very confident in his findings. It seems like he has chain of custody over the compounds as he was testing them. He is an ISO certified lab, etc. cetera. Um, so it's sort of hard to find out what is actually going on. Let's look at the possibilities. Now, the first possibility is that this Nootropics guy is just, he's full of shit. He just made all this up to stir up some controversy to sell his own stuff and these tests are not legit. They never happened. He just posted them. Wild card, bitches! Yeah! I don't think that is true. Uh, the Sika Strength guy who knows a lot more about this seems to think that this guy knows what he's talking about. He seems to believe in these tests. And, you know, this Sika Strength guy, he's probably the least biased out of anyone. Now, another possibility is that it's just a bad batch. It was just a luck of the draw. This one sample, this one product, this one container just didn't happen to have very much or almost any turkesterone in it. Uh, that seems like pretty long odds, especially as it's not just one company's product. It seems to be the vast majority of products that are highly underdosed. So I don't think this is the case, but it's a possibility. Now, another possibility is that it is willfully underdosed. I keep seeing the word scam thrown around. Again, it's a possibility, but I think it is unlikely. The thought that you're going to put a product out there that is like, you know, is super underdosed. I mean, I wouldn't put it past Greg, given what has happened in the past. <clears throat> Fat burner. Um, but I definitely don't think Derek would do this uh, just because someone is going to test it at some point. And if you knowingly put it out, like you're just sort of, you're burning any kind of long-term potential clientele that you could, might have eventually. So I don't think this is the case even for Greg. Now, there's also the potential that it is a supplier issue because using this UV Viz test, beta-ectosterone and turkesterone, 
both look the same. Perhaps the supplier knows this, and so they just chuck in a bunch of beta ectosterone. That is a possibility, but apparently beta ectosterone is actually more expensive, you know, to source compared to terkesterone. So I don't know if this makes sense either. So it could be a supplier bait and swap. Maybe you send the first ones out with more Turk, and then later maybe you can't get a hold of Turk because there's too much demand, so you just swap it with beta ectosterone. Maybe they send it to this ABC lab. ABC lab is like, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, keep paying us. We'll keep we'll keep saying it's great. Um, and that is a possibility as well. Heck, even in that Eisenman study that I quoted ages ago, that was underdosed as well. They said, hey, here's 100 milligrams of terkesterone. Sorry, six is the best I can do. So either it's super, super powerful in order to find an effect, or that one study was just not very well done, or it's random chance. And so at the end of the day, it seems like there is underdosing across the board. Now, one thing that has kind of struck me is how Derek and Greg have handled this totally differently. Derek has been on this. He's been in the Reddit threads. He's been on a bunch of different videos. He's been talking to this Nootropics Depot guy. He's been posting results. He's been posting tests. These tests haven't really been enough to fully convince the Nootropics Depot guy or Seeker Strength uh, that all the batches of Turkestrone were actually correctly dosed. But, you know, he's been in there. He's been in there with his own account. He's been apparently, you know, on the phone talking to a bunch of quality control people. He's even reached out to the Nootropics Depot guy saying like, hey, we want to solve this as well. We want to get to the bottom of this. Uh, and Greg has been uh, kind of nowhere to be found, which is, you know, not too surprising. Supplements are in fact tested to see if they are what they say they are. There's no bullshit put into this. You can't just say, oh, there's terkesterone and there's not. We don't have supplements where we add in secret ingredients or don't put in exactly what's stated. And Greg hasn't posted any testing. I don't even think if he knows what is in the product. I don't even, I don't even think he knows about quality control or the tests. He hasn't posted any tests, nothing. Uh, he posted something on Reddit yesterday, like a week after the situation. Uh, and, and, you know, just how these two men have dealt with this situation is way, way different. And I'd be kind of pissed off if I was Derek at, at Greg's actions, to be honest. You know, he starts selling this product, which I don't think there was ever enough evidence to really sell it. But, you know, he made it clear from the beginning, like, this is just an experimental thing. I don't know if it's going to work. Like, we'll see, you know, tell me your experiences, etc., and then he runs out of stock. It sells out super fast. People are really hyped for it. And, you know, he goes through all the process with, with the cyclodextrin and the complexing, and et cetera. And then Greg starts selling it, hyping the shit out of it. Four pounds of muscle in a month. Oh, my God, this teenager deadlifted so much because of, of terkesterone. And the analogy that I want to use, bear with me. It's basically if you're going camping. I know, I know. And you start a fire in the campfire. And then... Your friend takes a log and he starts just burning grass nearby and, and just setting a forest fire. And you're like, dude, what the, what? We just started a little campfire. And he's like, nah, bro, we're in this together. Uh, we're friends. Like, this is all the same thing. And you're like, no, dude, like, stop it. What the hell? Chill. This is not, this is not what I signed up for. Fucking hell. And, you know, how many times have you heard Greg say, oh, Derek and I, Derek and I, Derek and I do this, Derek and I, oh, do you doubt Derek and I, this kind of stuff. And I'd be fucking pissed if I was Derek because, like, they're not cut from the same cloth at all. They're selling the same product that Derek was selling first, but in terms of how they're going about it and how they're dealing with this situation in particular, it's totally different. Now, at the end of the day, this new Tropics guy posted the test. He seems very confident in the results. No one has really been able to truly dispute those or budge them, but he's also biased. And at the end of the day, I think it's clear across the board that Terkesterone, as a product, not any particular company, but just the entire industry with this particular supplement, has a lot of issues, and it seems to be systemically underdosed. And thus, I would say a lot of the gains are really just placebo, especially that four pounds of muscle in a month claim. That is even more egregious now that we know that potentially there wasn't really much in there in the first place. And so if you're a consumer, a supplement aficionado, 
My advice would be to take the opposite approach of technology. It's cool to be a technology early adapter, but for supplements, there's really very little benefit, especially in an industry that is not regulated particularly well. You want to be a late adapter. You want to have a fuck ton of studies at your disposal. You want to go with the companies that you can trust, although that's hard to do at this point. But you don't want to get on this early supplement hype train because it usually crashes. And this isn't the first supplement scandal. This won't be the last one either. I would say keep your supplement use as minimal as possible. I take very, very few supplements, and yet I see a lot of people who they have pretty mediocre physiques and mediocre training and a mediocre mindset, and yet they are taking five supplements, 10 supplements, 15 supplements. I see the list on the questionnaire, and it's just mind-boggling how much money they are wasting. Diet, sleep, consistency, training, exercise selection, execution, knowledge, progressions, periodization, Get this stuff down before you even consider supplements, because they are supplements. And at the end of the day, be skeptical. Be skeptical of anyone's claims. Be skeptical of this nootropic side. Be skeptical of pretty much everyone. That is going to protect you as a consumer. The exception would be my book, because it's fucking awesome. Enjoy your gains. All right, that is all for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Turkesterone, is it the shit or is it just shit? Peace.